Hello everyone, Silks by Tanya. Tanya Butcher here. I am uh, beginning to create a feather pattern silk scarf and want to share with you my processes. I'm using Habode silk and a soy wax as my resist. So here I'm beginning to paint the feather design onto the silk and I, I prefer using wax as my resist because it actually removes completely from the scarf and um, it does retain a very nice clean white area where I'm painting the wax on. It's important to make sure that you have good coverage and it is penetrating the silk all the way through. Otherwise, you will get a uh, line jumping happens, um, as well as uh, it won't it won't be a clean white surface. It will uh, allow the the dye to creep behind the wax. Um, it's very easy to do with a lighter silk like this. Um, some of the Charmuse heavier 19 millimeter weight is, is a little more difficult. You have to use a lot more wax. Um, but just as beautiful uh, end result. And um, so this particular pattern I really like um, because I actually have birds and, and they are a lot of my inspiration. So I, I really enjoy painting feathers. Here I am painting a 14 by 72 inch scarf. And uh, once I complete the feathers, um, I will lay in some some dye and then once the dye has dried I will go to my ironing board with this piece of silk and place the silk between two pieces of newspaper and then I will iron the wax off of the silk before it gets steamed. Um, one of the things I'm showing here is uh, when I'm creating the feather, I like to have the sheath of the feather and the actual uh, hairs on the feather to actually be separate. Um, so you can see that I'm leaving a little space between the sheath and the hairs on the feather so that the dye will actually go into those areas and uh, make it more visible. I just really like the way that, that that plays out. This frame that you see, I built this frame out of PVC and I've used some cording. It's, it's cording that I bought from uh, a fabric store that you use for pants or for hoodies. And I just bought a lot of it, and I have little eyes, um, metal eye hooks that I run this cable through, and it's elastic, so it allows me to really stretch that silk nicely and, and even. And then I have the, the blue hooks there. You see those are the Chinese suspension hooks. Um, I really like those hooks. Um, I hesitated at first to actually pierce the silk, so I used cl just clips that holds onto the silk. But what I found was uh, it was difficult to find something that wasn't stainless steel, or that was stainless steel. And I was getting a color variation where those clips were when the dye would react to the clip. So I actually decided to move away 
from those and, and go to these suspension hooks. And I've been very, very happy with them. Um, they don't leave a noticeable mark or hole in the silk. Uh, once you steam it and wash it, it they're, they're completely unnoticeable. So it closes up that hole. Uh, the heavier weight silks are, it's invisible completely with those heavier Lissermuse and um, even the Habode. So I, I wouldn't be concerned using those. I really like them. And what I have my wax in, uh, I have just a little, a small slow cooker crock pot type of thing. Um, that I just keep wax in and when I'm ready to use it I just turn it on and, and let it melt and it it keeps it perfect at the right temperature and and it's uh, it's much easier to use that way so I'm just continuing here with creating some feathers and this process takes me roughly 15 minutes to create the feather pattern on a silk scarf this size. We're almost to the end. I really like using a, a very random stroke with the feathers. I, I like I like a feather that is tattered and, and sort of ragged versus a, a very clean, pristine feather. So that's what I'm creating here, a very tattered look. Last feather going on. And then uh, what I'm going to do is sign this piece. I sign all of my work, because it is artwork. So I have a batik pen, and it, it's fantastic for signing pieces. It actually has a reservoir in it that melts wax, and it has a pin that drops down, here it is there, it drops down to keep the wax from coming out and you have to push down on it in order to get it to come out. So I really recommend this batik pen for outlining or writing, it's great. So here we have uh, the dye. I've mixed up a salmon color and a, and I have diluted it because I like this, uh, I want this feather pattern to be more of a spring-like color, a very light salmon color. So what you see me using there is a, a sumi brush. It's a medium size. I truly love the, the sumi brushes for painting silk uh, due to the, the huge reservoir that it has. It really absorbs a lot of dye. And it also allows me a very nice point to get into those spots that, that I want to place the dye but not have a big puddle. It actually does a very nice job in, uh, in helping me to do that. And I'm just laying in the dye here, being sure to cover the silk evenly, but also not allowing the edges to dry. Once those edges dry, it, it will give me a hard line, and I don't want that. I want it to be a smooth one color, no real texture because I want those feathers to really 
be the focal point. And as you can see, that feather is very pristine and white and clean and very beautiful. So the wax, I recommend using the wax. And I, I really think it's easy to use with the brush. It gets the job done nicely. I use jacquard uh, dyes, silk dyes. I really like the color variations in that brand. I also I use the green label as well as the acid dyes. I have um, I found the acid dyes go a lot longer. They actually will last a lot longer. Um, even at full strength, it's a powder that you you mix with water, and uh, and they are beautiful colors. They steam up very nicely, and uh, I really I recommend those. I purchased my silk and my dyes from from Dharma Trading. They have a huge selection, and uh, their prices are fantastic. Just painting in those areas around. I'm trying to avoid, for the most part, avoid the wax. I have um, some situations where I'm okay with and comfortable with just painting right over the wax, getting into all the, the smaller areas. But in this case, um, because I want that feather to remain as white and crisp as possible, I am avoiding those areas with wax. If I were to just paint right over that wax area, some of that wax would adhere and penetrate or, di or dry to, to the wax, and then it's, it makes it very difficult to get it off. And then I, once I go to the ironing board, as soon as that wax is melted, that dot of, or streaks of uh, dye that have, dr have dried on that wax will mar my feather, if that makes sense. I have, um, I have some patterns that I like the way that looks, but in this case, I, I really like the feathers to be crisp and pristine. So I'm, I'm just avoiding those areas best I can. Um, some of the dye is getting on the feather, but, but not very much. And again, this process also takes about 15 to 20 minutes for this size of scarf. It's, you have to go rather quickly. It's, it's not something you can stop and take a phone call or whatnot. It, you need to continue throughout the process so that you don't get any drying and, and get hard lines. So I'm going to move the frame again, so I'm in eye shot there. Actually, I'm, I think I'm at the end of the scarf. So what happens next? I will allow this scarf to dry uh, several hours, if not overnight, if possible, before it goes to the ironing board and then into the steamer. So check out my website, uh, silksbytanya.com, and, uh, and I'm sure you'll see this scarf as well as many others in different patterns and, and different uh, techniques. And if you 
see a particular technique, you want to see how it's done, um, just send me an email or, or a phone call even would be great. And I'll see if I can't make a video on that as well. I appreciate any feedback that you wouldn't mind uh, sharing your thoughts on, on my process. I think one of the best ways to learn is to communicate and anything I can learn from you, I greatly appreciate. If you have a, uh, a technique or a, a suggestion of something I can try, I'm always up for new things. It's fun to experiment. I also offer classes um, in my studio. I can take up to five people at a time. And that's only because I have five stretching frames here. So um, I want everyone to be able to work at the same time. So if you'd be interested in, in taking a workshop or Maybe a ladies' night out. I'm located in Gold Vein, Virginia, which is in Northern Virginia. And I'd be happy to hear from you. We can get something scheduled. I also uh, exhibit and sell my work at art shows um, on the East Coast. So if you visit my exhibit page, um, you'll see my schedule of art shows and where I will be, and if you'd like to come out and meet me, that would be fantastic. I'd love to meet you and hear from you. I'm just finishing up here, and, and then I will allow this to dry. So I want to thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was helpful. And again, if you have any feedback, I welcome 